but let's go ahead and um should i share the screen or should we um we'll, we'll, yes. we'll, put, we'll put the link in the, for the warm-up in the chat right there are the responses as we go You got that already. Okay. Yep. Great. So um, Nick put a Google Forms link in the chat. Um, this is actually so going to be our warm up, and this is also an activity that I have used in my classroom as well. Uh, in the beginning, when you're just introducing you know, this whole concept of what is artificial intelligence to your students, is to have them go through and answer these questions. Out of each one of these activities, who would do it better? Is a human better or is an AI better? And notice you only, you don't get to say, well, maybe you have to definitively check one or the other. I think Nick, if you go through and answer the questions, then it will give you an option to see them. Can you all give us a thumbs up or a yes or something when you're finished? Okay, I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. So let, let's go ahead. Uh, a couple people might still be working on it, but let's go ahead and, and screen share and uh, begin. Um, so, so real quick before we get and take a look at the responses, uh, just to make sure everybody's in the right place, you're at Secondary AI in Maryland. Um, uh, we have, uh, we'll get to introductions in just a minute, but Nora, Kimberly, John, and I, I'm Nick, uh, will be helping lead this session. And hopefully you've just done this warm up, human versus AI. So Nora, here are the responses. Okay. So like I was saying, this is an activity I do with my class um, to, you know, start the conversation. Actually, this was adapted. Originally it was um, giving the kids two different colors of tickets and having them put them into a bucket and then analyzing the colors. But Google Forms has been able to work very well with this remotely. <clears throat> so like, <clears throat> excuse me, a good chance to have a conversation. Um, even the first question, seeing if the kids have ever heard of Watson. So if you have really young students, they might not, excuse me, <clears throat> remember when um, Watson went on Jeopardy and won proving that the AI was better than a human. But obviously some other things like climbing a mountain and um, recognizing faces. Um, and then I always am happy when I see that people pick humans as being the best of feeling happy. That should make you all feel really good. 100%, <laughs> that's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> and I actually, yes, finding patterns in pictures. So they are, we are discovering that um, artificial intelligence is much better at seeing and identifying patterns um, than humans are. All right. So like you're saying, it's um, a good conversation starter about, you know, why a kid might have picked one thing over another. Like when we get down to um, the crossing of the street. Um, oh, that's 50 50 now, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then I always ask, well, what about, you know, self driving cars? Isn't that the same technology um, that the car would have to be using to determine whether or not it can go through an intersection? So obviously the cars weren't or not readily available everywhere on the street yet. So there's still some work to be done there. Okay. Um, so um, we wanted just to take a moment and introduce ourselves. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm Nick Gates. Uh, I do teach math, engineering, and computer science um, in Baltimore City Public Schools. I've taken some courses on AI. Uh, I've integrated them into the classes I teach, um, uh, some computer science classes, and done a little bit of work with that. Uh, Nora? I'm going to hit that real quick. 
Gotcha. Okay. I'm um, sorry. I'm Nora Blasco. I'm a high school computer science teacher in St. Mary's County, and I've had the exciting job of uh, teaching AI units to my students. It's been a lot of fun. Hope to share some things with you today. Okay. Right. Kim? Hi, I'm Kim burton Rodolski. I'm a math and computer science teacher um, at Baltimore County Public Schools, and we are working on developing an um, AI program for um, CT. And John? I'm John Chapin, and um, I teach at the Academies of Loudoun, which is a public public magnet, magnet school in Northern Virginia. Um, I teach juniors post APCS kids um, uh, junior research, which is really machine learning, um, and it's and it's um, the programming side of machine learning. So we actually have them program gradient descent and. And calculate and calculate back propagation, which they're never happy about. But um, we kind of go into a lot of detail. I'm going to be talking about that later. Uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you all the participants for joining our session. Uh, this is a quick outline of uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start with that uh, CTE pathway being developed in Baltimore County, um, with Kim and uh, a bunch of people are involved in that. Um, but Kim's going to share that. Uh, John is then going to talk about the class that he teaches. And there are classes on AI currently being taught um, in, in Virginia, where John is, as well as in Maryland, in Montgomery, and Washington counties. But he'll give an example of a class and sort of an outline uh, or syllabus or, or, uh, for the class. Um, then um, Nora is going to talk about her introduction to AI unit that she teaches at the end of exploring computer science. Um, and Nora and I will also talk about the AI for educators workshop that we run um, to train teachers in um, AI and integrating that in their classes. We're going to look at some lessons created by teachers. We're going to talk about some awesome activities and, and we want to make sure we have time at the end for discussion to hear from each of you about what are you doing with AI. Uh, so with that, I'll hand it over to Kim. Nick, can you move on to the next slide? Is it? Yep. Okay. So um, Baltimore County is basically in the development process of um, creating an AI um, CTE program. So early on, um, the CTE administrators, um, Douglas Handy and Michael Grubbs, um, met with a variety of local partners and colleges um, to really justify that there was a need for that program. Um, and then they included other perspectives, um, supervisors for computer science um, and resource teachers. So Carol Lynch and Amanda Lattimore got involved um, and they kind of came up with this idea that we are going to develop this AI program. So then they went on and um, created this advisory committee. And I'm on the committee with um, several other teachers, um, district admin, um, again, local colleges. Um, there are national experts on AI on the panel. Um, and we actually added students to get their perspective um, and a lot of industry representatives. And we're also working with um, CertiPort certification professionals because they're developing an AI cert and then um, the colleges as well. So we meet as a um, committee. Um, right now we're doing every other week um, to discuss the, the pathway and our plan for um, the AI program. So, so this is our schedule of um, meetings. So as you can see, um, we're gonna be meeting out through July. The initial meeting was really about introductions and talking about the grant that Baltimore County received. And then um, the next meeting, we had industry um, partners um, talk about their perspectives so we could kind of get their point of view. 
And then our third meeting, we started to develop the program name and then look at the pathway. So we had several options. Um, so now we're looking at course content and then um, basically developing those courses. Um, Baltimore County applied for the MSDE Innovation Grant. Um, so they, they wanted to basically add this CTE program. Originally it was called Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Um, we're leaning towards dropping the machine learning and just calling it Artificial Intelligence. The program is supposed to start um, in 2022, 2023. Um, the purpose of the grant was to ensure that um, BCPS is responding to industry needs and involving technology. Um, and then um, they want to distinguish between our regular high school's computer science three credit program and the magnet program for artificial intelligence, which will be four credits. So they're looking at how can this CT program be different than those of a comprehensive high school. Um, can you click again? I think there's a, yeah. So behind um, this, as we're defining, uh, can you go back? As we're defining AI, uh, we're using the AI um, for k12.org. There are five big ideas, um, perception, representation, reasoning, learning, natural interaction, and societal impact. So we're using those big ideas to kind of define AI for us. Um, and we actually have um, people in um, the committee from AI for K-12. Okay. Um, and lastly, like looking here are the pathway options. So we um, discussed the three possibilities and then um, there was a Microsoft forum where each of us gave feedback about which option we preferred and why. And then we had several group discussions about the options. Um, I myself lean to option three, but in the end, it looks like we're leaning towards the option one, which is incorporating the AI or the AP computer science courses um, with two AI classes and then a capstone project in the end. And I think that's it, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, so that's basically where we are, we're right now at that option one and we're looking at what belongs in that AI one and AI two course. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, just, just for time, if you have questions for Kim about that pathway, if you could put them in the chat and, and Kim can monitor that, but we're gonna continue on uh, with John and an overview of his course. Oh, that's a perfect segue because we kind of do option one at the academies allowed but not right now. So the first two years, our students do kind of an introduction to computer science. Second year, they do a PCSA as sophomores. Um, and having the really nice thing about that is having that programming foundation is awesome because we can teach them Python in like two weeks. Once they kind of get it, Python's so much easier than Java. I don't want to say it's so much easier, but it's easier than Java. Um, so we don't have to spend a whole lot of time teaching them. It's mainly syntax, right? Um, you know, and it's lists instead of arrays, and it's dictionaries instead of hash maps. Um, so are these courses in the counties do? Oh, yeah, I don't know about Maryland. For us, for us, it's a course sequence that we totally created on our own. Nobody else, I mean, nobody else was teaching um, yeah, nobody else was nobody else was really doing this. I, I know Thomas Jefferson High School um, in Northern Virginia. They do a lot of. It's not really a course sequence. They do um, electives, but for us, we kind of have to do a course sequence. We don't really have a choice. Um, so junior year, this is what they do, and then senior year. In fact, we just decided. We just had a meeting yesterday, and we realized that the students really need a full year of machine learning. We were only teaching, uh, I want to say, two and a half quarters of machine learning. And really, they just, they just I mean, this is, this is like a 300 level um, university course that we teach. But um, if you look, we do an introduction to machine learning. They actually code gradient descent in Python. 
we used Andrew Young's course, online course, um, as kind of a basis uh, for teaching this. Um, we didn't get to Keras until near the end. So you can teach, you don't really have to teach. I mean, it's a really kind of a big decision. You really don't have to teach Keras out of the, I mean, you really don't have to teach students how to do gradient descent in Python out of the gate. You could have just Keras do it. There's still, I'm looking at the thing. Um, so this is, this is what I teach. Um, this is my third year teaching it. The big thing, is the, the real focus is to get the students to the point where they can do their own. They can find their own problem they want to solve, get the data for it, and analyze it. Um, we have a wide range of student successes. So one of, my, one of my pairs of students just finished. They spent senior year doing it, um, but they used an LSTM network, and they actually took somebody's music and created new music out of it which was really cool. That was similar to that person's music, but not the same. Um, so that took a lot. Um, so that was kind of, that was kind of um, where we're, that's what we do. Um, but like I said, we really have to get to the point where we wanna, we want them to spend a year at it. So um, two and a half quarters is just, it's really like a semester course in college and like, APCS really needs to spend a year for high school kids. All right, next slide. All right, so this is my bit for the Python for AI course. So if you know Python, I think that's great. Um, there are some specific things you need to know to teach AI um, using Python. If you don't know Python, um, this course that I'm going to offer um, this summer is um, will also get you going from scratch. So a little bit's going to be on, you know, kind of why we deal so much with matrices in machine learning. It's really going to be kind of specific to machine learning too, not like AI with with um, decision trees and things like that. It's going to be more around matrix manipulation um, and data cleaning and teaching you the tricks for NumPy. The fun, I think the biggest thing is, once you start seeing it's everything seems to be one line of code, four loops, there are no loops. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like NumPy does everything. <laughs> um, and getting used to that, visualizing, um, visualizing what the data is doing. Um, so we're gonna be doing that in a, in a week, week long class uh, this summer. Um, and it's gonna be covering um, how data is represented, how to use NumPy, um, how to do math with um, the matrices, um, how to read in stuff, um, and then the crazy stuff like slicing and broadcasting that NumPy just kind of magically does for you. Um, and Boolean masking. First time I saw Boolean masking, it freaked me out. But then after a little bit, I was like, oh, that's what it's doing. Okay, this is kind of cool. Um, and then using matplotlib to um, matplotlib to uh, graph. So um, go ahead and go to the next one. So that's the that's the bit on my course. If you're interested in learning about it, um, uh, it's going to be a little bit of just regular Python and then um, the specific NumPy um, and plotting stuff. So these are all. If you want to look at my course. These are just, these are not clean links. These are like the links that I give my kids. So if you want to look, you feel, please feel free to uh, look at my course syllabus um, of what I'm teaching now, but it's changing and we're actually going to go even more into depth um, uh, next year. That's all I got. Cool. Thank questions. you so much, John. Um, uh, again, for questions, if people can put them in the chat and you can respond in the chat, John. Um, I yep, I got it. Keep on checking. Uh, okay, Nora. Okay. So um, that was like the more advanced secondary type of thing. I'd like to take a couple minutes and just talk about some of the introductory type things that would be very appropriate for middle school or early in um, high school. Um, so one thing to mention though, um, so Sarah, Sarah Judd's gonna have her um, breakout later and she'll be talking about AI for all and all the things that they have, which 
you would most like you would want to go to if you're interested in that. I'm just going to talk about um, two different things. One is when I was trying to figure out a unit um, ways to introduce this to the kids in my foundations in computer science class, which is of the equivalent of a CS discoveries class in code.org. I noticed that exploring computer science had just released an alternate AI unit. Um, and I took a look at it and I liked a lot of the things that were in there, but, and these are the topics that are in their unit and in the presentation is a link um, to their uh, curriculum unit as well, if you wanna take a look at that. Um, but what I decided to do is I wanted to incorporate some of the um, tools that I had used. Um, so if you can go ahead to the next slide. So I created my introduction AI unit that has, I, I call them lessons, but each lesson is very multiple day type of thing. Um, spending quite a, a number of days, you know, just introducing the whole concept of what is AI. And that's the warm up was one of the activities that we do there. Um, the kids explore by watching videos and things like that. Um, yes, there is a bit.ly that you can go in and you can check out this. These are freely available. I'm sharing um, all the things that I created here. And um, so those are the four topics. And actually, if you go ahead to the next slide. Um, so in the uh, what is AI, some of the resources that we um, use is um, obviously one of the fun things is the Google experiments, Google AI experiments, uh, letting the kids go in there and just um, and play around with um, the tools and whatnot and, 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 you know, sharing them, getting excited about it. Um, another website about learning about where machine learning is used in the world around you and getting the kids um, to, you know, recognize, start, you know, putting connections together with the fact that all the data, where's the data come from and you need sensors. Um, and just a lot of the things that you saw mentioned earlier um, today when we were hearing from uh, the other folks about, you know, all these concepts, these AI concepts. So this is introducing it to the kids and, and making them think about these different things. So if you can go ahead to the next slide. And, okay. I, I think I froze there, hopefully I'm okay. <laughs> All right, um, the next lesson is um, on machine learning. So I, I, I try, you know, very top level, you know, about machine learning. Um, this is as, as sophisticated as um, the lesson gets in this little diagram here. But uh, what's fun about this is I use machine learning for kids and I use it to um, introduce natural lang language processing. So the kids create um, a machine learning, um, a machine learning, I'm sorry, model. Yeah, my brain drain. Uh, and they use uh, words, so they, use, uh, so they put in their own data so that we could do something like happy versus sad and then they, they, they train it and then they test it. And if you have time in your classroom, you can go further. Uh, the website gives you lesson plans for creating a scratch program using that model. So the kids can, um, you can pull together, you know, any coding that you've done already along with learning about machine learning as well. All right, we can go to the next slide. And then image recognition, another really important concept in use of artificial intelligence. Um, and this is where we use Google's Teachable Machine, which is a lot of fun to use. It's easy to get the kids in there and to get their first project done, to learn how to collect data, how to train the model, and then how to test it. And then I like to take it a step further um, by allowing the kids to try to think of what's a problem that you could possibly solve by using image recognition, such as you know, being able to identify poisonous snakes versus not poisonous snakes, being able to tell me what the weather is by pointing my camera, you know, my phone camera up at the sky and taking a picture of the clouds. So, um, and this is where I find the, the kids get really creative too, when you're giving them the opportunity to try to solve a problem. And go ahead to the next slide. And then finally, that important concept of um, the impact and the ethics of AI. Always have to pull those things in. Um, and in this one also, I, I, I always try to do project-based things. Um, getting the kids to pick a, a category of something, you know, like sports or medicine, um, and to do a little bit of research and to find out, you know, well, what's the good thing that's coming about because of AI versus what are some of the things we need to be concerned about? And a lot of good conversations that we could have when the kids get to present those types of things. Okay, go ahead to the next slide. Cool. 
So um, Nora actually developed the curriculum for a workshop that's run by MCCE, and she and I have uh, have led various uh, versions of this. I, I've, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces and familiar names here that that uh, already took this intro to AI for educators workshop. Um, but for any of you who haven't yet taken it, uh, this is our little plug right here, you should do it because AI can be integrated as we've seen as an entire pathway, as a single course in a computer science pathway, um, as a unit within a computer science course, or even integrated as just one or two lessons um, into existing courses. And those courses can be computer science courses or really any subject as we've seen by the educators who've taken this workshop with us. Uh, so we've, we've run it um, roughly every two or three months uh, since last June. So we've already had over 100 teachers and educators participate so far, uh, which is really awesome. Um, it runs over the course of three weeks, uh, meeting twice in the evenings um, each week. So a total of six synchronous Zoom sessions. Uh, there are also some asynchronous lessons through IBM MindSpark. And the focus is on integrating AI into your classroom and, and you uh, develop a lesson uh, over the course of that, um, um, of that workshop. And, and as is being said in the chat, there's, there's no computer science background needed that this is, we've had teachers all the way from K through 12. Uh, well, at least early elementary. I don't know if we've had a K teacher, but uh, first or second grade all the way through 12th grade, as well as uh, PD facilitators as well uh, participate in this. You will earn one Maryland CPD credit um, and there is a session starting on Monday. So if you want and you're inspired by this to sign up, click that link right there, April 19th and sign up. Or if you're busy this April and want to sign up for one this summer, there's another session being run in June and another in July. Um, this is the sequence of live live sessions. We change it up a little bit each time, but, but this is the one from February. Uh, we do talk about AI, what it is, dive into machine learning at a basic level, talk about the impacts and ethics and careers in AI. And as mentioned, um, uh, you develop a lesson over the course of these, these three weeks that, that you will be using in your classroom. Um, there are also these on-demand institutes and we're, we're just sort of here putting the link here to them um, to do the asynchronous learning. And even if you're signed up in the summer and wanna start these early, feel free to do so. So one of the awesome things, and I'm not gonna really talk much about these just because I see the countdown timer says we have nine minutes left. I don't know if it's gonna automatically kick us out of here when nine minutes is up or there is a break in our schedule after this. So I hope it won't kick us out. Um, but there, uh, as I mentioned, teachers from all sorts of subjects, not even computer science, have also developed lessons integrating AI into their classrooms, all the way from art and sociology to computer science and technology and a teacher who runs a club. And so I put the, we put these links here um, just to show you some of the variety and encourage you to click on them and sort of see how teachers are developing lessons across the board. Uh, one additional plug for a, a workshop is um, if you've already taken that intro to AI for educators with Nora or me or Jen or Tom or Mike, um, that um, we are doing another follow-up this summer that's sort of geared towards people who have completed that intro workshop, uh, but you don't need any additional background in, in computer science or AI to do this. Um, and those are the details and the sign up link there to the follow-up workshop. Okay, back to Nora. Okay, so just to provide um, some fun things, uh, Nick's showing you the, the slide. Um, these are just a couple, just like a drop in the bucket of a lot of the resources that are available for you to use in your classroom. And these are the ones that are uh, quick to get your students engaged. Um, like, as I had mentioned, Google's AI experiments, it's a, it's a huge page of um, links to different experiments that you can get the kids to check out. Um, Google's Teachable Machine, I put in the link there for machine learning for kids. Um, so the Teachable Machine, machine learning for kids are things that you would um, wanna use over multiple days uh, with your class, but a really quick one, which face is real. You know, that's a nice little warm up. You go and you see two pictures and you have to decide which ones um, was real versus the one that was, like Nick will show us, 
All right, so one of these is real and one of these was generated by AI. So it's a good test. And it's actually pretty remarkable because last year it was real easy to tell. Um, and this year they're getting better and better and it gets a little bit more challenging as the algorithms are improved. So, which, oh, so okay, so you got it right, yes. So it's a nice little thing. Um, and another uh, quick one, um, I went about the ethics and things like that. Survival of the best fit is about um, the AIs behind um, people that are AI programs, reading resumes and trying to pick people and hire people for jobs. A quick website, will robots take my job where you just type in teacher and see what's the, what's the likelihood that an AI will take over your job. And then the more sophisticated, um, higher level kids um, that are really looking at neural networks and, and that level go in and try the playground exercises there. So if you have, um, you know, these slides, you can go ahead and um, take a look at those. Okay. So we're going to ask, um, oops, sorry. Uh, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to do a, uh, uh, some discussion. We want to hear from you. You know, the, the way we'd like to start out hearing from you is just with a very quick two question poll. And I think Nora is putting the link to that in the chat. Um, is, is what have you done around AI? Um, and the first question asks about what have you done around your own learning and professional development? And the second question is what have you done in your classroom? So take a minute and then I'll show the results of that. And that'll hopefully guide our continued discussion where we're gonna ask you to post some things on a Jamboard and we want you to talk out loud and or in the chat, sharing some of your ideas that you've done. Here, I guess I'll respond for me and then I'll see the responses. Or I can click the little edit button and see the responses as they come in. Okay. Looks like we got us a significant number who've done um, none of the options there. Uh, some who've read articles or read a book. Uh, we've got three people who've attended. The workshop, the the Nora. Oh, four people. Okay, Nora developed. And in terms of your own classroom, looks like about half uh, half of you have done none of these. Haven't taught AI yet in your classroom. We hope that's that yet is going to change. And um, and a bunch who have taught one lesson, one or two lessons, or or integrated some discussions of AI. Okay. So Nora, do you want to describe the Jamboard and what we want? The link for the Jamboard is in there. And this is just a chance um, to share. The first frame is um, if you've done something with AI, can you tell us what it was? Do you want to share anything there? <clears throat> Excuse me. And the second frame is, well, what else do you want to learn? Because we're just, this is just like a taste of the things that are available. Is there anything else you're interested in that maybe we could help you with finding or maybe think about creating? As a teacher, what would you need? And so as, as you post them, we really do want you to post them to the Jamboard so we have a record of them. But as you post them, we'd like you all to open up your mics or um, describe. you can also uh, describe them to us and share what you've done or share what you'd like to see in terms of uh, future professional development around AI. And I'll click over to the Jamboard, but then let's talk. There are, as Nora said, these two frames. You can click that arrow button right there. An example of an AI lesson or something cool about AI you already use, you'd like to share with the whole group. And the second frame is what do you want to learn? So somebody has created additional frames beyond the first two, but um, we'll stick to the first two. Hey, 
AI applications and teaching English language. I would love that. I've got a lot of ESOL students at my school. As a counselor, introduce students to careers in AI and learning opportunities. And that's one of the breakouts that's coming up next, correct? Careers in AI? I, th I think it's uh, concurrent. Um, I think it's happening now. <laughs> oh, okay. So I think hopefully we'll be able to get the recording or the presentation then. Okay. Yeah, recordings will be posted of all of these later. Mm -hmm. Google machine learning, identifying our emotions. Quick draw. Oh, I love quick draw. Yeah. Uh, that's great for like a 10 minute warm up at the beginning of class and, and then, yeah, go from there. What I like about quick draw too is you could do it for an introduction and then you could go back to it later. And I believe that you can go in there and you can see um, they have all of the drawings that they use to train their model as well. So you can investigate it further. Did anybody want to share a little more detail on either um, something cool that you do with AI um, by unmuting yourself and chatting with us? or what you'd like to see. Oh, and of course, you know, the code of bias, some, <laughs> now that it's on Netflix, I was like, ooh, can I show it in my classroom? Uh, we're going to be closed in 10 seconds. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, please continue to add to the Jamboard, um, and we'll see you. See you around. Thank you.